So on to the third theme, which is surveillance. And as we've talked about, we need to know what type of resistance is out there so that doctors can make the best uh, guesses as to which antibiotic to give you. In all the maps we've shown you in this course, it's almost always just Europe. And the reason is we don't have data in most of the world. And so uh, Joachim Larsen's group and another group are working on creating a very inexpensive uh, detection device to be able to sample anywhere very cheaply and so that they can bring it back to the lab and figure out how many antibiotic resistance uh, bacteria there are. So they want to create this device which can be sent all over the world. All the people have to do is put it in a water or wherever they're going to put it and then send it back to Sweden. Uh, so they're working on this and or to another lab somewhere else uh, to be able to quickly get better surveillance data. Then we have the environment, and Joachim already talked about this a lot, um, which is that we need to know how frequently antibiotic resistance is occurring in the environment and how to prevent it. This slide, which I don't remember if he shows, just summarizes that you have sources of antibiotics coming from hospitals and people, as well as agriculture and pharmaceutical plants, all leading to resistance to some degree. But we don't well know how much. Uh, the next theme is transmission. Transmission has to do with, uh, transmission in this sense refers to conjugation. So we talked about how uh, DNA can be transferred directly to other bacteria. And this is my personal project, so, and Martin's. Uh, we have a project looking for inhibitors of conjugation. So we want to be able to develop a drug that will stop conjugation they could slow down the, the spread of resistance. It's not going to solve it. It's going to slow it down. And the way we've been doing this is, uh, is by assaying how well bacterial strains can conjugate, transfer that plasmid. Ultimately, we'd like to be able to minimize conjugative spread, both in uh, humans, animals, and the environment. Given the fact that plasmids are very diverse, we're focusing our efforts on chromosomal genes in the bacteria. So, but there was no good way to do this. All right, we need to look at lots of genes and lots of organisms. And so we developed a system to be able to quickly look at conjugation. And we used it to look at 4,000 mutants of E. coli with four different conjugated plasmids. And how do we do this magic? That's a lot of uh, assays. Basically, we're using auger plates where we can pin 1,536 different conjugation pairs. So we can quickly get a large number of growth curves, or mating in this case, uh, results in a very short amount of time. So essentially, we screened all of these in a matter of weeks, basically. So using this, we found a number of mutants that don't conjugate well. So here's our control that conjugates well in blue. And then in green, for example, is something that conjugates very poorly. And so we're in the middle of figuring out what are all these uh, mutants that we found. We think it's likely we find mutants that affect the expression of the genes on the conjugated plasmid, or those that have a problem making this pilus, or those that affect replication or transfer of the actual DNA. But we're still in the middle of doing this. All right, and then the next uh, theme which you've heard a lot about in the last uh, couple of lectures, are interventions. So how do we influence people?
to do the right thing. And you heard a lot of discussion about this. And the people we want to influence are doctors and veterinarians. We want to influence the livestock industry. We want to affect environmental pollution. Governments, of course, are involved in all of this. And people like you. And as you've heard, the social scientist's role then is how do we encourage good antibiotic stewardship? How do we decrease environmental pollution? And there's no clear answer to that, but there are hints that you've heard about. Okay, so lastly, if you are interested and want to learn more, I have a couple of websites that are recommended. CARE, of course, has new research. ebug.eu is appropriate for younger people, so high school level um, students. REACT group is a advocacy group that is fighting to improve um, knowledge about this problem as well as influence governments, etc. Antibiotic-resistance.se that site will have this entire course on it, including the quizzes and everything. So in the short term, you have Canvas, of course. But if you ever want to go back to antibioticresistance.se, they're not up there yet. The old version of the course is up there now. But in the future, you can tell your friends to watch all the videos. They'll all be organized there. And then... CARE has a Facebook and Twitter account if you want to follow the research going on at CARE. And then Microbiology News is my own Twitter and Facebook accounts where I post about different types of research in microbiology, but a large amount about antibiotic resistance because it's important. And that's it. Um, thank you very much.